Hi, this is Craig Lurie, CTO and co-founder of Keeper. I'm going to show you a quick demo of the Keeper admin console. Inside of the admin console is where you're going to onboard your users, set up roles, role enforcement policies, teams, and other security settings. Sign into the admin console with the email address and master password of the administrator. If you have two-factor enabled on your account, enter your two-factor code. Inside of the admin console, there's a few key sections. Here on the left is what we call nodes. Nodes are organizational units. You can turn nodes on and off here under the advanced configuration. By default, nodes are turned off. For my demo, I'll turn nodes on. Here in my nodes section, I've set up a node called Active Directory. Inside of that node, I have a node tree that corresponds to my Active Directory installation. If you don't use Active Directory, that's okay. You can create nodes manually, and you can add users to those nodes. Here in my example, I've got East Coast and West Coast. Underneath East Coast, I have a sales organization, and under West Coast, I have engineering. Here in my engineering organization, you can see the users that I've got set up. For each user, you can click on the user and see the user properties. Name, email, the node that they belong, and the status. Status can be active, or invited, or locked. Underneath the status, you can see the roles that are assigned to that user. In this case, the developer role is assigned to Gene. Users can have one or more roles. For example, Rainer is assigned the role of a Keeper admin, the engineering manager, and a sysadmin. To lock a user or suspend them from accessing their Keeper vault, you can simply click on the lock icon here. And now this user will be unable to access their Keeper vault. To delete a user, click on the trash can. You can click on the transfer button to transfer this user's vault from one user to another. And I'll explain a little more about how that works in just a minute. To create a new user, click on the plus button and simply type the user's name and their email address. You can click add user or you can drag and drop a CSV file. The CSV file format is simply email address, name, and the role. The next tab here is roles. You can have one or more roles within your organizational node and each role has enforcement policies assigned to it. Additionally, you can set up delegated admin through this role. To create a new role, simply click on the plus button and assign a role name. Click Save, and I'll click the plus button next to the users to add users to this role. Now I'm going to switch over to the developer role. If I want all new users added to this node to be assigned this role, I can simply click this checkbox and any user that's added to this node of engineering will be automatically assigned the developer role. Under enforcement settings, this is where I define the enforcement policies for that role. You can define the master password complexity rules. Under authentication, you can require the use of two-factor authentication. When the user signs into their vault, they'll be able to choose any number of two-factor authentication methods, such as text message, Google Authenticator, RSA Secure ID, or Duo Security. You can also enforce the master password expiration to occur on a periodic basis. Under the sharing and uploading section, this is where you can control what users do within their vault in regards to sharing of password records. You can prevent record sharing outside of Keeper, meaning that the users can only share within the organization. You can prevent record sharing with anyone. You can prevent export of records from the web app and desktop app. And you can also prevent user from uploading files such as file attachments. Here's where you're going to configure your account transfer permission. For this developer role that you see here, I have account transfer turned on. And what this means in this scenario is that the developer role can have their account transferred, in other words, their entire vault from one user to another by this engineering manager role here. The process of transferring one user's vault to another in the case that they leave the organization is a very specific encryption transaction that occurs here on the console. And that transaction can only occur once for a user. Here in the account settings screen, you can restrict offline access. You can also enable automatic backups. By default, everything in Keeper is automatically synchronized and backed up to our cloud security vault. If you want to enable snapshot backups of the user's vault, you can do that. And this will initiate that backup when the user signs into their Keeper vault. Click Save, and everything is saved. To add users to a role, click on the plus button here, and simply select the user, 
I'll click OK. Administrative permissions refers to what we call delegated admin. And this would allow a user to be able to log into the admin console and perform administrative functions within the console. So for example, let's look at the engineering manager role. The engineering manager has administrative permissions over the engineering node. Click the configuration icon to set the permissions. So in this case, this role has all permissions within the admin console underneath the engineering node. The next tab here is Teams. Teams are a secure and convenient way to group users together so that users within their vault can share to the team. Teams can have any number of users. Simply click on the plus button and check the boxes for the users you want to add to the team. Within the Keeper vault, users can create a shared folder and share that folder with an individual user or a team. For example, I might want to create a shared folder that contains passwords to servers and network hardware. In that case, I might want to share those passwords with the sysadmin team. Similarly, in the East Coast node, I have a sales team that perhaps I'd like to share sales-related passwords. A special feature of the Keeper Admin Console is the ability to specify that a team has restricted functions. For example, the ability to disable viewing passwords. This is also called password masking. So here I've created a team called Use Only Passwords and any shared folder that's shared to this team, they will only be able to use the passwords. To create a new team, simply click on the plus button, enter the team name, set the team restrictions, and then click the plus button next to users to add users to the team. To delete a team, click on the trash icon. To show you how teams are used, I'm going to log into the Keeper Vault Here in my vault, you can see my folders on the left, and here's a shared folder called MySQL Databases. Here in the shared folder, you can see that the sysadmin team is shared to this folder. Within the shared folder, you can see I have permissions set on the development server and the production server. The development server has edit and share permission, while the production server does not. Here's another example. The social media shared folder is shared with the sales team with permission set for a Facebook account and a Twitter account. The next tab here is two-factor authentication. As I mentioned before, each user can individually set up two-factor authentication on their device. And they can choose from text message, Google Authenticator, Duo, or RSA. At the system level, I can enable a two-factor method because we're fully integrated with RSA Secure ID and Duo Security. To enable Duo Security for your entire organization, Simply enter the details of your integration, which you can get from logging in to your Duo console. The next tab is the AD Bridge. You can see that I've activated my AD Bridge on this engineering node, and you'll know that by seeing the status here of active. To install the AD Bridge, click on the Download Bridge button and install this software on any workstation or server that has access to AD. Here's an example AD configuration. I've opened up my Windows workstation that has access to the AD server. You can see these three tabs along the top of the AD configuration. You've got the Connections tab, and you can see the connection status of the Keeper service, the directory services here on your AD, and also to the Keeper cloud. On the LDAP AD tab, this is where you can configure how the Keeper AD bridge maps your organizational structure over to Keeper. You can specify domain filters for users, nodes, roles, and teams. For more detailed information on how to configure the AD bridge, please refer to the Keeper Admin User Guide. Any changes that take place here on the AD side, once this is all configured, will automatically publish those changes to your Keeper Admin Console. So for example, you can see here on the Engineering node, all of the users that have been synchronized over to the Keeper Admin Console. Anytime I drop a new user into this node, they'll automatically be invited to the Keeper platform. Likewise, if you disable any user within this organization here, they'll automatically be locked from their Keeper Vault. Here on the Options tab, you can also specify whether or not to turn on debug logging. You can set the polling interval. This is how often that the AD Bridge queries your Active Directory. And you can also set up some other properties, such as your email property, to make sure that your AD email maps to the Keeper Admin Console email for that user. For help setting up the AD bridge, 
please take a look at our user manual available here. Click on the download admin guide. If you need additional assistance, we can also help. Please contact us by clicking on the support link and one of our sales engineers will get back to you immediately. Here on the license tab, this is where you can set up your number of seats within the organization. You can click on the Upgrade Now button and check out directly on our website, or contact sales at keepersecurity.com. Here along the top of the screen, you'll see the Security Audit. The Security Audit score represents the overall security of the organization. This combines record password strength, the unique record passwords, the master password strength, and also two-factor authentication settings. You can drill in to see individual users' score and also export this data. The recent activity report contains every event that's captured within the Keeper system. You can search through events on the interface, or you can export this data directly to a CSV file. This section here is the approval queue. If a new team has been picked up by the AD bridge, for example, the inside sales and Keeper admins team here, I can approve the creation of those teams within Keeper. And now that team is created within my Keeper admin console. Here on the right, is my security settings for this account that I'm logged in currently. I can set the language, I can set the auto logout, reset my master password, reset my security question and answer, change my email address, enable two-factor authentication, or I can set the PBK DF2 iterations. Keeper is a zero-knowledge security platform. And what that means is that all of the encryption and decryption of data occurs on the user's device when they sign in to Keeper. That includes mobile devices, desktop apps, web browsers, and every other platform that we support. Keeper utilizes 256-bit AES encryption using PBKDF2 to generate keys. For our sharing functionality, whether that's user-to-user -user sharing, team sharing, or shared folders, Keeper utilizes RSA encryption. So for example, if you're going to share a password from one user to the other, the password is first encrypted with the recipient's public key, and the recipient logs in and decrypts that data with their private key. To learn more about Keeper's security architecture, simply visit keepersecurity.com forward slash security, and you can see how data is encrypted using both AES and RSA encryption. That's an overview of the Keeper Admin Console. If you have any questions, please email support at keepersecurity.com or click on the support link.